Caution. All garages are different. Watch this video all the way through and carefully read written instructions before installing. If you are unsure or uncomfortable with installing this product, contact a structural professional. Always test this mechanism using a live load. Never stand, allow children or pets to be under a lifted object. Misuse or improper installation of this product can result in serious injury or death. Follow all safety rules and regulations of tools and ladders while installing this product. Wear safety glasses and protective gloves when installing this product. Hi everybody, Carter from Lang Originals here to talk to you about our hoist the top crank system, the double line pull. I just wanted to go over the unboxing with you and show you what to expect when you, your package arrives and you're ready to put it in. So when you first open your box, you'll see that there's some foam in here. This is not packaging, this is actually part of your hoist. So there'll be two white pieces of foam, a large one and a smaller one shaped like a T. Make sure you hold on to those. You'll have four black foam pieces, also items that you'll need to use in your installation. Your actual crank unit. Parts bag. Bungee cords, your wire cable, three hooks, two that are J-shaped, and one smart hook, three pulleys, uh, a single, a single, and a double. And finally, you'll have your lifting, your lifting frame. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your frame out and get it assembled. So, so you remove your frame arms. And it's protective plastic. Get your hardware bag. You'll need your foam pieces and you'll need your bungee cords. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, my two black foam pieces on each arm. Then I'm going to take my white square and I'm going to put the I'm going to put the larger square on what would be the left side of the T. There's a you'll notice there's a little slot in here that it'll slip right over your lifting blade and go on quite easily, we hope. There we go. And then I'm going to have my uh, final bar go in here. Oops, I put that on upside down. So your holes are going to be here on the underside. Now you notice there's two holes. This hole will be for the uh, two-door JK and this hole will be for the four-door JK. I know that seems backwards but it's actually the longer side goes for the two-door. All right, we're gonna set it up for a four-door today. So, have this. Now, uh, we'll put our, we'll put some of our hardware together. I'm gonna take the three, three eighths inch nylock nuts. We're gonna put each of the hooks Then you're going to take your grommet strap and don't forget to put this on because you'll end up taking it apart again and putting it on later. Put it on there. Same with this other side. Don't forget your grommet strap. All 
All right, now we're ready to put the frame together. So again, there's gonna be some different holes here on the top of the lifting blade. You'll see that the, the hole here first will be the longest, will make the longest, that'll be for the four door. And then the hole on the inside will be for the two door JK. This will also work for you TJ owners as well. This, this hole, TJ or CJ will be, the, be this hole as well. So since we're doing a four door today, put that in. Put the second one in. Great. Now we're ready for the third hook in the back. So you'll take your smart hook and put this right on. Your 3 8 inch nylock nut. And you're almost ready to lift with the exception of the foam piece. You separate this, there'll be a little throwaway part right here that you can just go ahead and chuck. And then this is going to go just sandwich nicely. And there's some little, so there's some little keyway cutouts here that you can put your foam piece together right here on the back. And it slips together. So the final step here is uh, well, the final two little steps, we're gonna, we're gonna put in our end caps. So this will go on each, on each end. And you can use a hammer, or sometimes you can even put them in with your fingers if your fingers are strong. My fingers aren't feeling strong today, so I'm just gonna use a hammer. Tap that in. And you can do that on, on all three corners. And then finally, you'll wanna tighten down your, um, your hook. And we get questions every once in a while, how far should I tighten it down? Should I tighten it all the way down to the bottom of the thread? What you need to do is you just need to tighten it down. Now this is what, this is a nylock, this is a nylock nut. So what it has is a, a nylock washer in here that will hold that fast. So this will not come undone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten it down to the point where all I see are two threads showing just right above here. And that's the, and that's the lifting, uh, lifting frame. To determine an ideal lifting spot, back your Jeep into your garage. Hang a string with a small weight or a plumb bob to the center of your hardtop. This will give you a good reference point in the ceiling. Now we're going to go over the first part of the garage installation, um, prepping our 2x6 boards that are going to hang on the wall and the ceiling. So these 2x6 boards are going to hold, they're going to hold the pulleys that the cable is going to run through to be able to hang your top. So um, in our garage studio here, our studs are on 16 inch centers. In your garage, they may be, uh, they may be on 24 inch centers, they may be on 16 inch centers, you need to determine that so you can know how uh, long to cut your two by six boards. So cut your boards to the appropriate length. For, for us, we're on 16 inch centers, so I've cut these at about 20 inches so that I have some nice overhang on each side. That way I don't have to worry about the board splitting when I put in my, um, my screws that hold it onto the wall. And I've marked these boards at uh, 16 inches on center here in the middle so that I know exactly where to put those screws. And I've also drilled some small uh, holes with a small bit so that um, a pilot hole just so that those, uh, those screws can go in down nice and easy. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna measure for the double pulley. And to do that, I'm just gonna measure the center of my board which for this 20 inch board is gonna be 10 inches. And I'm just gonna make a mark so that I know what the center is. And then I'm gonna place the, the double pulley here on uh, right on center. I'm gonna mark the holes just in case I lose my spot. I can remember. And then I'm gonna remove, I'm actually gonna remove these two wheels um, just because it makes it a lot easier to screw in, uh, screw in the pulley onto the board. In order to do that, I've got to remove one of these spring clips. 
which can be a little bit tedious, but it works well if you have the right tool. And I, I found a pair of needle nose pliers is the best way to remove those. Before they do that though, I wanna make sure I wear my safety glasses because you never know these little springs could flip. So I just put it right down inside of there and just pull off that spring clip. I put that aside because I'm gonna have to put that right back on. I'm gonna remove the axle. And you'll notice on the back side here, there's welding marks and then there's little tabs. Those little tabs help keep the, uh, they help keep the pulley on the board nicely and it's uh, kind of a little, uh, something that kind of crushes down into the board and it makes it a little more secure. So those are there on purpose. I'm gonna put those in place. Then I'm gonna use four of the screws that are provided in your parts bag to put this on right in the dead middle of the board. Okay, that's on and ready to go. So the, those little tabs have just crushed right down into the board and it's holding in place very, very solid. Okay, so the next, two, the next two pulleys are gonna go on. The next one is gonna go right on dead center just like we did with the double. So I'm gonna measure again. Again, this being a 20 inch board, I'm gonna measure here dead center at 10 inches. And then I'm going to put this on exactly the same way. I'm going to remove the I'm going to remove the, the wheel and the pulley, and I'm going to screw this on. Now the third the third pulley wheel is going to be slightly different. The only difference is is that we're going to put it on one inch left of center, and that allows the cable um, from the uh, from the crank unit when we put it on the wall. It'll allow the cable to run up by it. Uh, without any interference at all. So that's really the only variance on this is that this third pulley needs to be over one inch. So I'm going to measure again and instead of doing it the 10 inch mark I'm going to do it the 9. So I'll just mark here the 9 inch. Alright, well I'm going to get all these screwed on and then we'll be ready to install those into the ceiling and on the wall. Okay, so it's time to install our first board. Uh, the first one we're gonna install is gonna be on the wall and that's where the crank unit's gonna go. So I got one of my pre-cut uh, boards here. And as I mentioned before, our, our studio walls here are on 16 inches. And so I'm gonna install this, uh, I'm gonna install this here on this wall. And our recommendation is to do it about 50 inches. So I'm just gonna measure up here. And this isn't a hard, fast me measurement. I mean, you can change this. In fact, I'm a little taller, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put mine at about 55 inches, just because I, you know, I like to to work the handle at about that about that size. So I'm gonna line this up here. I'm just gonna eyeball it level and make sure. And for those of you that really like everything to be super square and feel free to put a level on there but it's not absolutely necessary this just needs to be kind of nice and eyeball straight and then i'm going to screw each one of these to the wall before we hang our crank on the wall we have to just disassemble the uh, the spool so again, I'm going to take my uh, my 9 16th wrench that I that I used earlier, and a crescent wrench on the other side, and I'm just going to remove this axle. This is a nylock uh, nut again on this side. So I'm going to put that aside. Okay, now inside here there's a 
There's a little floating axle, so you want to just make sure that that doesn't fall out. And then, uh, and then we're ready to hang that unit. It's uh, a lot easier to access the back when you, uh, when you remove that axle and you're ready to hang it on the wall. Okay, so now let's uh, install our crank uh, here onto the wall. So first I'm gonna mark the holes. So your correct orientation is your worm drive is gonna be on the bottom right hand side. And so this oval, t this oval hole is gonna be on the top. So uh, one thing I wanna make sure to do here is I know that my cable is gonna go up the, up the wall here and um, go with our pulleys in the ceiling. So I wanna make sure that this is in the center of the studs on the top of the ceiling. And, and uh, then I'm gonna make some marks here with my pencil. I'm gonna put it in this, uh, this oval hole and then I'm gonna put, it, um, put a circle on the bottom hole here. And then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna drill some pilot holes. And I'm going to drill the second hole on the bottom of the oval hole just so that uh, there's no interference with the hardware. Then using the two three inch lag screws that you, ha that you have in your parts bag and the washer, the flat washer, I'm going to put these up on. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to use my impact, uh, my trusty impact wrench here to put these on because it, uh, the socket will take a little longer and I think this will go fast. So. I'm not going to over tighten it too much until I get it uh, all positioned here. I want to make sure this is nice and square and so that the cables go right straight up into the ceiling and, and we're, ready to, uh, we're ready to put the spool back in and then uh, do the, steel, the ceiling installation. Um, we're going to install first in the top corner up here we're going to install this double pulley. And um, now this double pulley can be installed in two ways. Um, you can install it this way if your studs happen to line up right, um, or, in the, or in this case, it's gonna line up a little better for us that we do it on the ceiling. Either way is okay. Um, uh, it's just whatever lines up best for your situation. And what I wanna make sure is, now we've, we've already pre-installed all of these things, so it should be Everything should be lined up nice, but, but the, the, pertinent, the most important thing here is that we want to make sure that the cables from, the, from our, our unit down here come up nice and straight and, and come in contact first with the, with the double pulley. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to take our, I've pre-installed the, uh, the long uh, screws here, these decking screws. And I'm going to go ahead and just drive these up into the ceiling in place. And then, uh, okay. Now let's install the, the second board on the ceiling, uh, the first single pulley. And um, this uh, measurement is the one that is less critical. Um, it's gonna be custom to your garage. So the distance from 
the first uh, double pulley that we just, or the double pulley that we just installed. The measurement from here to where we're gonna install this first one, it's kind of up to you in your garage. If you have something in the way, or if you have a, a constraint or something like that, then you can kind of customize this distance. Um, we're here just in our, in our studio garage. We're, we're doing uh, about, uh, about 55 inches is what we're doing here. The only constraint you're gonna run into is that you have about 20 feet of cable. So you need to keep that in mind if you're gonna do something really long, your, your only constraint is gonna be that you're gonna have about uh, 20 to 23 feet of cable. So that being said, I'm gonna hang this up here. And again, we have our just our pre, our pre ready to go installation here. I got my screws in here so I can put them in nice and easy, hopefully. Make sure this is nice and straight on the wall or on the ceiling. I'm just gonna. Okay, great. And we're ready to put in our final pulley and. Okay, so we're ready to hang our final pulley. Now, just as a reminder, this is the pulley that we uh, put as an offset. It's one inch to the left and so as we hang it on the ceiling, we're gonna make sure that that stays on the left side. And um, uh, the last measurement wasn't, uh, it, that one you could customize. This one, this one needs to be pretty right on. 34 inches is um, the distance uh, that we think it's, it's very best to put. So you're gonna measure 34 inches from the ceiling, or from the first pulley, the, uh, the first single pulley here. So that's, the 34 inches is where the pulley is going to hang, so at its, at its center. So I'm, I'm going to place a mark here with my pencil. And I'm going to hold up, making sure again that this is on the left side. I'm going to make sure that the center of the 2x6 two by, two by there. And then I'm just going to I'm just gonna place a little mark there so I know right where exactly where that's gonna go. Again, I got my pre-drilled holes. I'm ready to put this up. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I measured out my cable, and what I've done is I've made uh, a long side, which is a 20 foot, 23 feet, and I've made the short side, which is 20 feet. So you have 43 feet of total cable, and I put uh, a piece of electrician's tape here, just right here in the middle, to, to let me know that uh, this side is 23 feet, and this side is 20 feet. And then uh, as kind of a, a dummy thing for just for me, because I'll lose track, I actually put a little piece of tape here with the word long on it so I remember that this side is the long side. This is kind of the, this is kind of the, the technical part of this. You gotta make sure that, this is, that these get on the right side. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through, and we'll have to get a little close up on this so that you can see for sure how this, this happens. This is not too bad, but so you have to go in to one side like this, and then I'm gonna pull this all the way through right to my, right to my piece of black electrician's tape. Right there. Now I know that the gear side um, is where I want my long cable to be wrapped up on, and the non-gear side is where I want to have my short cable on. So I'm going to come back through again in this second hole. I'm going to come back through here, loop around.
And now I'm going to put the other side through. I'm just going to lace it through on the other side. So then I'll have my long side on the gear side and the short side on the non-gear side. And then that will be consistent with what we've done on the ceiling with our offsetted pulley. So I'm just going to put this back through on this side. Okay. All right, great. Now, I don't really need that, so I can I can just take that off and discard that. But as far as for my for my memory now, we got it in the right we got everything on the right side and it's ready to go. So it makes just like a little loop shape and it goes through on a cross right there. And uh, we will be ready to wind this up, but we're not gonna quite wind it up yet because we're gonna wanna uh, lace it through our pulleys first before we start to crank it down. All right, so um, this part should be really easy. The only thing you have to make sure to keep track of is to make sure that you keep your wire uh, straight and so they don't get crossed on the way up. So again, the gear side, which is our long, which is our long cable, we're going to just thread, through, thread this through on the double pulley. So I'm going to put this up here. Pull that through. It's nice to have the little mark of tape there, just, you know, in case this moves a little bit, you can just make sure that gets aligned. And then the second one here, which is the non-gear side, is going to go up here on what would be the left side. Make sure these are nice and straight. You can see that those, they run parallel to each other without crossing, you know you're in good shape. Okay, so we're ready to thread our cable through the single pulleys. So I'm just gonna make sure that, again, that I'm keeping the long and the short one uh, organized here in my hands. So the short one, which is over, which is over here on the non-gear side, that's going to be the, the, the short is going to be the first cable to go through the first pulley. All right, great. And the second cable, uh, which is the, the longer cable or the 23 foot cable, is going to go through our second pulley which has been offset to the left one inch. And it should. Now we see why the offset was important so that this cable is able to run past this uh, first cable or this first pulley without any interference at all. So everything looks good. Everything looks nice and straight. It's uh, straight up and down from the power or from the crank unit up to the ceiling, and we're ready to install our uh, lifting frame, and then we'll be ready to lift our top. So now it's time to attach your frame to the steel cables. So what you'll need out of your parts bag is you'll need your six wire clamps and the two thimbles. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to thread the thimble onto this uh, front lifting tab. And then I'm going to take three of, my, uh, three of my wire clamps, and I'm just going to thread these on first. That'll prevent me from having to take them off and then put them back on, which is kind of tedious. And then I'm going to uh, pull up oh, about uh, three or four inches of slack here until it's just slightly taunt. I'm going to slide all three down on top here. And three. Uh, 
okay, and I'm going to fasten the one on the very top. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have the, the loop of the wire clamp on the short side of the wire. And uh, this is the safest way to tighten this on. And what I have here is a nut driver. Uh, let's see, the size is an eight millimeter. And these are really nice. This is my favorite tool to use. If you don't have it, a socket will work just fine, a deep well socket, just in kind of a small, sm uh, small diameter there. And I'm gonna tighten this down at the very top first, making sure again that that loop side is on the short side of the cable. I'm not going to tighten it down too tight. I'm just going to make sure that it's snug. And then I'm going to tighten this, the one that's right above, right above the thimble. And I'm going to make sure that all of the wire nuts are going exactly the same direction. That's the safest way to install this. I'll tighten that down. It'll be snug, but not, not tight. We're not going to tighten it super tight yet because we're going to do a little test fit. I didn't get quite get that wire on that thimble there. Okay, there it is. Okay, and I'm actually going to push that down a little more so that it's nice and nice and snug and there's no gap there. All right. Now I'm going to space this third one again going the same direction as the other two. I'm going to I'm going to just space that equidistant just by eye going the same direction and I'm going to get that uh, nice and snug, but not super tight. All right, great. Now I'm going to move to the back. I'm going to put this thimble. Uh, you can see there's lots of holes here on the back. I'm going to go on the farthest back one, and that's the hole I'm going to use. And that works for TJ, YJ, JK. That's the one you want to use. And again. I'm going to slide these on so I don't have to undo them all. One, two, three. Okay. Those are nice and snug. They're not going to slip or move, but uh, they're not down as tight as I can do it. Okay, so we have our, we have our wires all connected. Um, let's lift our frame slightly and see how we did on the balance of it. So I'm going to use a, uh, you can either use your, you can use your handle or if you want to kind of move along a little quicker, uh, a, a drill with a, a 19 millimeter um, socket, deep well socket will speed up the process considerably. So I'm going to use this just for sake. I'm just using the I'm just using the existing um, nut that came with the uh, came with the unit. So I'm going to raise this up a little bit. I'm going to raise it about three feet is all. And what I'm looking for is I just want to look and see how uh, it looks like this is hanging, and it looks like it's hanging really very very flat um, already right off the bat. But what I actually want to do is I'd really, I really like to see the frame hang just a little bit, um, a little bit down in the back. And, that, and that's because when the top comes down, um, it's easier for that part to touch first and then slowly come down to the top. So um, I'm going to just adjust this. So that's why I left these slightly loose. And I'm just going to pull the cable ever so slightly until it's at a spot where I really like. And I think that's good. All I needed was an inch or two. And again, I have my, uh, my, my nine millimeter nut driver here. I'm going to put this on nice and tight. Nice and tight. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way that's hanging. And, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift my top now. So I actually want to make sure that these are um, tightened down very snugly. And then I want to go around and just check and double check and make sure that I have the threads showing that I need to on, the, on all my ho hooks and my lifting. 
and I'm in really good shape, so I'm ready to lift the top now. Top tip. Removing the handle and U-shaped bracket, you can use a cordless drill to raise and lower the mechanism effectively and reinstalling the nylock nut tightly. We are using a half inch drive made from a drill chuck and an 18 millimeter socket. So we have it sitting on the ground. Your chop may be on the ground right now, uh, or it just may be on top of the Jeep. You can do it either way, no problem, but no need to put it on the ground. We're just doing it for our kind of our, you know, easier purposes for you to be able to see. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna just gonna lower this down on top, and, uh, and then I'll put the hooks under, and then, and then we'll talk about where the Freedom Top pieces go. So I'm just gonna lower this down slow, nice and slow. And I've got it lined up so that you can see the channel, uh, the middle channel will be nice and lined up with the, with the lifting T. And then you can see that this is a four door top, but you can see that um, the hooks can go nice and e easy underneath of the door. And it looks like we're about uh, four or five inches away from where the back of the door goes. I'm gonna close both of these under. And then I'm going to put our smart hook uh, back here. I'm going to turn it to the side. And I'm going to stick it underneath. Now, it's nice to have this uh, finger up out of the way with the magnetized, uh, with the little magnetized ring. That's where that comes in handy. And I'm just going to turn that to the side. And then this window is going to be ready to close. Now, you don't have to close your window if you don't want to. But if your garage is tight like mine, it's nice to have this window closed and out of the way. And uh, then we have uh, the, the safety finger that comes down and it will, and this is what helps to keep your, uh, helps to keep your window uh, from coming open. So we'll just put that down, have it right there, perfect. Okay, and it doesn't really matter if your window were to come open, but uh, it's just nice to have it, uh, have it shut uh, and know that it's not gonna come open in case there's something there. So this is ready to lift now uh, with the exception of the Freedom Top pieces. So if you can just kind of imagine that the Freedom Top pieces are on here like this. And what I like to think about is I'm just gonna literally just turn them over. So this is gonna turn over like this. tuck under like that, and then you'll need your bungee cords at this point. Your grommet strap to your choice of the, your choice of the, uh, the holes here. I'm gonna put this one in the front, and then I'm gonna put the second one in, the, in here. I'm gonna grab this Freedom Top piece. And you'll notice that I have the I have the two foam pieces that are one that's pretty much pushed right up next to the edge of the T here. And this one about six inches away so that it uh, rests on this part of the top. And then the, uh, the white piece, I have this pushed all the way here on this four door top. I have it pushed all the way up to um, the edge of the T on the back. And then again, as though I'm taking this off, I'm just gonna turn Literally turn it over, it slides right under and there's a notch on both sides. It's notched here for either side and they're side specific so you have to get it correct. Ready to attach the bungee here. And uh, we are ready to lift this top. So before you lift your top, do a visual inspection again, and then you'll also want to make sure you remove all of your hardware and that everything's detached, including, and don't forget, your uh, wiring harness in the back. 
that doesn't like to be stretched and you want to make sure that that's off. Um, you may want to consider one of our products, uh, the Quick Kit, if you don't already have one. It makes it much easier to remove the hardware. You can do it all by hand. It makes it simple. And uh, our goal is that you are able to take this top off in about uh, three to five minutes. Okay, let's lift the top.